Good morning, good chaydesh. Welcome. We're, with Hashem's help, going to conclude the Maimer, on Daidi, at least for the first round. This is one of these Maimar that you could learn many, many times, and probably should, in preparation for Elul, and we're only the first day of the month, so we got time to do it. We were discussing the concept that Ani Ludaidi is a, that Elul is a acronym, Rasha Tevis, for Ani Ludaidi Vidaidi Li, which implies that the month of Elul has an element to it, or really, really a focus, of I am to my beloved. I'm going out, I'm getting closer to Hashem. There is also the Vidaidi Li, but that's primarily happening on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Ani Ludaidi means I'm searching how can I get closer to Hashem. What's my part, my effort involved? And we discussed a very uh, fundamental concept in Hasidus and in the Veda of Hasidus, and that is introspection, self, self-introspection. A person is looking to see how is his life doing in three areas, thought, speech, and action. People make the mistake and they feel the main thing is action. I didn't do anything, so what's the problem? However, I said certain things. And speech is very powerful words create things I'm sure everyone here has examples maybe a teacher that once told you you're smart and it got you going for years or hopefully not the opposite where a teacher said you're nothing will ever amount from you or you'll amount to nothing and uh, unfortunately um, has negative effects on the person does counting calories count for going inside and doing that it's actually a great example because it definitely counts if you um, if you count the calories, if you measure these things, good morning, these things will really help. Be good. Um, but the concept here is that when a person, when a person realizes that it's not just actions that matter, but it's also words, and not just words, but also thoughts, because thoughts really create things. It's true, it's more distant um, than the world of action, and it's distant even, you know, of course, even than, than speech. But thoughts are very real, they affect the person, they affect the world, and our goal in serving Hashem is not just on an action level, but also on a words level, and also on a thought level, which should be very um, primistic, internalized, thorough, in our service of Hashem. Now, if you don't know where you're at, you can't fix anything. And if you're going to constantly evaluate yourself a whole year, every day, um, in a very thorough way, you can't really serve Hashem, plus it's very could be very disruptive. It's not productive. So we say you have a month at the end of the year, and this is your time to review the entire year. And really it says, as I said in the Mimer, from the day that you came into existence. I'm not just looking at the last 12 months, or 11 months, but really ever. Where am I at? Thought, speech, and action. And whatever has to be fixed, we fix. That's why it's important to have a, an accountant who's also a rabbi. Is that right? <laughs> um, it's probably a good idea. Uh, taxes you can pay okay. but the concept is that when a person evaluates how, how his life was and up until now he can make certain necessary changes the key is to realize that I have an Hashemah that is a part of Hashem within the godly soul there's a spark of Hashem and this spark was placed into a body within an animal soul and it's in a sense in jail it's in captivity it can't do what it wants it could but it's very very hard so the neshama wants to learn to daven to serve Hashem. The animal soul says, let's go have fun, pleasure, enjoyment, selfish activities for no higher purpose. And he described that we have to figure out a way that every single one of our thoughts, speech, and actions are um, driving towards a certain area, which is serving Hashem. Nothing should be just empty. If it's empty, that's the idea of field and desert. A desert is a desolate, desolate place. Nothing grows there, nothing is cultivated there. It's just just a desert. And our goal is to, to have a little bit more of that uh, productive, civilized, normal way of living where it expresses itself in our thought, speech, and action um, that we're doing it for Hashem. So if it's not an actual mitzvah, it's helping us be better in order to do the mitzvah or it's leading to a mitzvah or it's a necessary component that's associated with being productive, which is also a mitzvah. Okay. Now, when a person realizes that his neshama is in captivity, he feels bad. That feeling bad is called a bitterness, which is not to be confused with depression or sadness, but bitterness is a driving emotion, 
And he says, I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta help this neshama out. It's a shame. It wasn't the highest of levels in Shamayim, appreciating godliness. It comes into this world where you could really do mitzvahs, and unfortunately, not always is that the priority. We tell the story about an neshama that was coming down into this world, and it really didn't want to come down. It says, Bal korcha chai. When neshama is born, you're, you live against your will. You come into this world that you're forced. And on the way down, it meets another neshama that's going up. So what's it like down there? He says, don't ask. For like five cupcakes, you could buy tzitzis. It's like, tzitzis, I heard about tzitzis. I mean, we learned about tzitzis, but I never, I don't know, a body can't expect, really, just five cupcakes, you could get tzitzis? For my, my neshama? He says, yeah, but until you get those five cupcakes, your neshama is going to leave the body. <laughs> and yeah, this is like, the neshama of you know, you're, gonna, you're just going to pass out trying to get those uh, five cupcakes. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the point is that in this world, a person could do mitzvahs, and the neshama is not. The rachmanas that a person feels, the compassion, the pity on himself, is a driving force that brings a person to ava, to love, and that love is really an emotion to serve Hashem. Now, a person reflects on all that, and he doesn't care, he's unfazed by it. So what? My neshama is in captivity, and I can't serve Hashem. So, it doesn't bother me. I'm happy with my selfish, uh, pleasure-driven uh, day-to-day life. So then he says, well, then you should meditate on a second level. That I don't even care. Because the example he brought is if you stub your toe, your toenail, it hurts. It hurts in your head. Right? You feel it. Why? Because it's attached to you. If it's not attached, you won't feel it. If I don't feel any remorse or, or any type of pity that my neshama is not able to do what it wants to do, I'm, I'm cut off from the source. Right? It's a godly spark, and I couldn't care less. And my godly spark is disconnected. That should bother me. So if the initial stage is not bothering me, then, 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 that, then, then that should bother me. Now what if the second meditation doesn't work, and I'm not, even, I'm not bothered by the fact that my Hashem is in captivity. I'm not bothered by the fact that I'm not bothered, which means I'm cut off on some level. We clarified, you can't really be cut off, but there's a certain uh, insensitivity, which should cause me to at least feel bad, and I don't. Then there's something called um, transforming the red into white. That's the idea of, um, it says that the, the, the uh, rose goes from red to white. The development stage, or, or when it comes to kashering, you put so much fire, so much heat onto something that the metal goes from red, the fire which starts with red, turns it into white. Red is an expression of Averis, as the Navi says, sins are expressed with the color red. Red is not necessarily bad, but in that concept, context, and it gets transformed to the purity, to the cleanliness of white. One of the reasons why in Yom Kippur we are, we wear white is to express that. How does one do that? It's through burning. And it says when a person takes his, their body and goes through fasting or sigufim, which are self-inflicted uh, inconveniences to the body, we deprive it from the pleasures and maybe conveniences of, of, of physical life that transforms the red to white and then he gets more sensitive to godliness, is more focused on that and not so much on let me enhance my my, my, my uh, material pursuits and pleasure. To clarify the Rebbe tells us that we don't do that today because the side effect of it is not worth it. Back in the day people were much a stronger physically and also spiritually and therefore fasting even though they're going to be weak it's not going to um, reduce their kavana and davening, for example. They're not going to be like, I didn't eat for four hours, I, I, I can't concert, I can't learn. But if you're going to fast, and as a result, you're not going to learn, so then you kind of miss the point. Besides the prescribed fast of Shulcharach, in general, a person should not, should not do that. And for sure, not rolling in the snow and, and doing other types of self-inflicting things, which were okay many years ago, today we don't do that. But there are other ways that a person could deprive some of the unnecessary pleasures of life which he does just for the sake of pleasure, and refrain from that and have a little bit more of a focus on what's important and not only on fun, fun, fun. But fun's important. The right people, the right time, in the right way, but that's not the end game. Okay. One more thing he says. This is where we're up to the last paragraph. We'll start from the beginning. One more thing. A person has to come up with various different ideas, ways within his soul. When it's describing 
the search that she has for him, which is an analogy for Hashem, for the Yidden to Hashem, it says, I'll search him out in the streets and in the marketplaces. Okay. till I found it. this that I loved. I held on to him. I won't let go. Till I brought him to the house of my mother and to the chamber of my parents. In short, what happened was there was a, a, a girl that went out to the countryside and there was a shepherd there and it's described how she really wanted the shepherd and they, they talked and everything was great and beautiful and he said, I'll finish work, I'll come to the city. He never came. Um, so she went out looking for him and she asked the guards of the, of the city, did you see this person? So they laughed at her, what do you mean? You think he's coming, he's not coming. Um, she said, no, 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 he said, and she looked, she couldn't find him. And after searching and searching, she was so uh, upset, she just went back home. And by that time, he was searching for her. And he ran, and he found where she lived, but she already locked the door. He knocked on the door, and she said, I'm not, you know, I'm ready, I'm going to sleep, I'm, I'm done. And uh, so he tried to to get into the to the door. And basically, at some point, he kind of gives up, and and she, um, when he when he's not interested, she says, oh, you know, I'm going to go find him. And she goes out to find him. And that's the neshama. Hashem is calling to the Yid and saying, let's go. And the Yid is, whatever, not today. Not interested. And then the neshama realizes, I'm on Hashem. But if you didn't want me, so the neshama is not, quote, not so accessible, if you will. And then it goes back and forth. But at some point, the neshama says, I'm going to go find it and hold on to it and not let go. So there, there is this process, and this is what he's talking about, is searching out Hashem. That would have been a class X felony, by the way, had he entered the home without her permission. Um, okay. Okay. Counsel. Yeah. Um, the police wouldn't have shown up, though. That's right. <laughs> However, the fact that he wanted to come in inspired her report <clears throat> to want him. Even though he couldn't get in, he left, then she went after him. Piro, she'ova nafshi. There's a great advantage here. I'm searching out for this that my soul loved, past tense. Meaning, I'm not starting from scratch. There's a relationship here with me and Hashem. And I love, my soul loved Hashem. Why do we say this? The Yidin, we came up in Hashem's original mind. Meaning, even before creation of the world, the existence of the Yidin find our place in Hashem's mind. The mind is a very deep part of yourself. It's a very internal part of yourself. And we're there. And in, in the parlance of Kabbalah, it's called Tehiru Ilah. We say this in Brachis. It's pure. Pure is even before Atzilos, Bria, Yitzira. It's very high up. Our Neshama comes from a very, very um, deep spiritual place. And because of that, it's appropriate to say that our neshama has loved in the past. Now it's a little tainted and it's a little bit confused perhaps and, and, and in captivity, not the neshama, but the, where it's placed, it's in captivity. But I'm searching out for that original state where I, where I was. Before Ata Barasa. As the Mimer, as he explains this on the Spasak of Yei Nasi Yasela. From this level comes the hidden light, the fact that our neshama originates or was once in a very uh, deep part of, of godliness. From there comes this hidden light. We spoke earlier that when Hashem created the world, it says he saw that the light was good. So the matter says the light was good, it's good to conceal this. This is treasure worthy. Where did he conceal it? He concealed the light within every single yid. So deep down, we have a love for Hashem naturally. We're born with it. But it's very, very concealed. That's what I'm searching for. I'm numb to spiritual pursuits based on the evaluation of the past year. And I see, you know, it's not really my drive. And contemplation and meditation is not doing it for me because I'm just not getting, whatever. It doesn't, I don't care. I don't even care that I don't care. Then you got to go searching. Search for this that you already lost. Because I have it. I have to just uncover it. I, if I could figure out how to find that love for Hashem, that Ava, it's there. I just gotta open it up. 
Kitev lignais, it's good, the light is good to, to conceal. Vizel Sha'av Anafshi Mikvar, this is what my Nishama loves from the past. Ah, however, yes, me Sha'avazu, Khanasaveda Atzla. You have some people that this love they're looking for is like a lost object. It's literally lost. I can't find it. I'm trying, but I can't find it. You ever lost your phone while you're on it? No. Um, so you're looking and looking. <laughs> I'm not that old either. I also, I, it happened to me. Vuchinas <laughs> Golos, <laughs> Golos <laughs> Canal, and it's in the level of Golos. This is what it says. I'm going to search this which my soul loved. Meaning, this Ava, this hidden Ava that I have. Now, where do you search? Like you always find it in the last place you look. The level of finding, where do you look? Look in the marketplaces and in the streets, in the place that you lost it. Okay. Even if I did find this lost object, let's say I searched and I was able to uncover the hidden love within myself. But now this love has to be contained in something. It can't just be an emotion because it's going to last for whatever the inspiration is. If it's an hour, if it's a day, if it's a week, whatever the inspiration is, it's it's light. You have to have some keli that's going to contain this ava. So what are kalim spiritually? So he says, You're not going to have the light of Hashem if not for kalim. Because this is going to cause a losing of the light, unless you're going to retain it, package it, you're not. It's going to it's going to disappear again, and you're going to be back to square one. You're not going to love. You're not going to feel that love to Hashem, and therefore you're not going to have the drive to do what you have to do. How, how do you fix that? says Kalim Hashem. Therefore, the solution is make Kalim for the light of Hashem. What are these Kalim? They're letters of Teira. If you have letters of Teira, and we'll say soon as and Tefillah prayer as well, these letters. They could maintain, contain your light. Because Hashem, your God, consumes fire. Just like a fire, which we're saying Hashem consumes. Oh, thank you. Key base. Can it consumes fire or consuming fire? He eats fire, but it consumes. All right. It's a fiery hot hot dog. One second. Consumes and consuming are both present tense. All right, all right, but we read it. It means consume. It consumes everything. He's a fire. and consumes everything in that sense. Uh, he consume consuming fire. Okay. Ki base imi zutayra. The the lashon and the pasuk and shir shirim that I'll find what I love. I'll bring it to the house of my mother. I mean, I'll bring it home. That is tera shebichsav. Written Torah, Chumash. Okay, that's basically me. Take this light, this love, and bring it into letters, words. Learn, you'll, you'll be able to retain it. The cheder heiraisoi, and the chamber, the room of my parents. Zutera shabalpa. This is the oral Torah. Shnayis, Gemara, Allah, etc. When she goes like Hashem lekecha ish eichlohu, like it says, Hashem yeibish there consumes fire. What's the analogy of fire? Just like fire. You need a wick. If you're not, without a wick, you're not going to have the fire. It's not going to hold. Chashem shi yev shal eish lehi achiz b'li p'sila eishum davar anachiz. But just like you can't have fire, it won't hold on to something without a, unless it has a wick or something. A piece of wood. Uh, what, what's the fires in Hawaii? What are they holding on to? Hopefully everyone should be safe and well. Those, those oh, people? No. <laughs> Call them burnt. Kach achaz tivulei arpeno. Similarly, I'm going to hold on to this light that I have I gotta be the wick, which are two parts, Torah and Tefillah. I'm not gonna let go of it, Achevesiv, till I bring it in. So, a person, he went through all these different stages, he reflected on his life, he made Cheshbainis, it didn't bother him, it didn't bother him, it doesn't bother him. He's trying to, to hold back some of the pleasures of life and not just do it for the sake of pleasure, at least it should have a higher purpose. He's not indulging in more physical, more pleasure. At some point, he found the light, meaning he feels the Avatar Hashem. But a feeling is just a feeling. It's like fire. You have to hold on to something. Yes, you have to have Avat Hashem, which is an emotion, and you have to feel it. 
but you want to retain it. The way to retain it is to create kalim, and that is through learning and davening. Those words hold the fire, the light, the love to Hashem. I must go to the Muslim of see what it says in, in, in another mimer. It says, the Pasuk in Shirashirim is also that which shepherds among the roses. He says, what's Sheshanim? She, um, Sheshanim is a, from the word Sheshoyne, the one who learns. Sheshoyne halachis. Sheshana is, is, is a rose, right? But Sheshoyne, right? We say in Davening, call Sheshoyne halachis. Anyone that learns, reviews, learns halachis. Right? It's all the same word. So that is the idea of of learning halachis. You need to learn in order to retain that love. We brought the example of transforming the red to the white. The feelings are great, but you have to have something that's going to hold it. That's why it says the one who shepherds. Right? What's the shepherd? Shepherd means that you're sustaining something. In the case of sheep, you're taking care of these sheep. In our relationship to Hashem, there's an interesting duality. Of course, Hashem takes care of us, but there is an expression, Ki Yisrael mefarnesen lavim sheba shemayim. The Yidin are giving sustenance, we're shepherding, so to speak, to our Father in Heaven. We're providing something for Hashem. What is that? Mipnei sha'idei esek ha through one's involvement in Teira, shur ditzayna yizbarech, which Teira is Hashem's will. What happens is, spirit evokes spirit. Ruach aisi ruach, the amshich ruach, and it brings forth ruach. It should dwell the inner desire of Hashem. Just like by people, if somebody knows or you express your interest in wanting to be with this person or having a relationship with this person, bar any prior experiences or other side reasons, normally the person, hey, you want to be friends with me? I'll be friends with you. Like, why not? And it's not just why not. It, it, it triggers something within you, right? This person likes me, so we can get along. In our relationship to Hashem, obviously he's not limited like a human, but the fact that I'm turning to Hashem evokes from Hashem to turn to me. So I'm shepherding, so to speak, or sustaining Hashem. When that happens, it becomes reciprocal or cyclical, right? And then it, it keeps going back and forth. But we have to do something. So in a sense, we're feeding Hashem. By the way, the Baal Shem Tev, um, came once to a town and he asked somebody, um, what's the funny thing? I've said the story too many times. <laughs> briefly, briefly, um, he asked him, how are you doing? And he said, uh, he didn't answer him. He was learning, and he didn't want to be disturbed. And, and basically, he told him, you're, you're depriving Hashem of his livelihood. Which is, who talks like that? He's like, startled. I mean, he says, this is a guy that was learning, davening. He was basically explained to him, the Kodesh, Yeshev, the Hilo Yisrael. Davda Malach says, you holy sit on the praise of the Jewish people. Which basically means Hashem sits, his support is... When a yid says Baruch Hashem, Mitz Hashem, Mitz Hashem Zal, thank Hashem. Um, there's ways that we, in a sense, support or provide for Hashem. The, the, the shepherd expression is that we're doing something to Hashem. Obviously, Hashem doesn't need anything, he's perfect and so on. But. So when, we, when we're involved in Teira, which is Hashem's desire, we bring this out. The Yeshero Barich, that within the person should now dwell the inner. Um, in words of Hashem's desire. Just like physically, when a person eats, so we said before about fasting, so now we're going to clarify. When you eat, his soul, you're attaching your neshama to your body through food. Right? If you don't, don't try this, but if a person doesn't eat for too long, then there's some kind of uh, attachment that, that, that's not there. That's why I prefer a sticky foods. It helps, right? Yes. Through the food, the kechas of his nefesh, they expand in a broad way. I guess literally too. Uh, it gets broad. But the point is that when a person eats, it attaches, it's the glue of his neshama to his body. In a similar way, the yidin sustain their father in heaven. You want to attach yourself to Hashem? It's through Torah mitzvahs. It's that's nourishment. Ruach, I see Ruach, I'm Sheikh Ruach. 
it's a spirit which brings forth and then causes this ruach to flow. Now you're causing it should dwell and be revealed, Shaido Miskala, the shine of the desire of Hashem in a face type of shine. Not, I got some light from the back, end. someone else has a Wi Fi, right? It's shining to you. Through words of Taira, and also through the mitzvah of Tzedakah. Why is Tzedakah? How does Tzedakah get here? We're trying to reveal our love to Hashem. And we re- we we're going to reveal it, but we want to retain it. So you said, Isis. Letters which create words, they're kalim to hold this light, like davening and learning. But now he's saying also tzedakah does that. How so? Because tzedakah is midas achesed, it's kindness. You're giving something to someone else doesn't have you, you're, 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 you're doing kindness. Shulchitzenius, which is external. And it becomes a keli to the level of light and ava, which is primius. So, teira and mitzvah, teira and tefillah are the kalim which hold this love which I finally found that I have to Hashem but it's a very primistic thing is the external one st- step is the tzedakah that I do to someone else that's the external package so to speak to hold this light like it says with the light of your face you gave to us taira of life and loving of kindness so it's the taira and it's the tzedakah which is the kindness because to the light of the face of Hashem, which means the direct type of relationship, there are two kalim. And the two tools to hold on to it is Taira and Chesed. Okay, mitzvah is, uh, tzedakah is a very general mitzvah, which includes in it or, or applies to all mitzvahs. Time is it? We have 15 minutes. Oh, we could. Do this again, or another moment. Should we take a vote? Let's do the kids here. The kids here, I think, is really good. If it's a docker, at least uh, in the sense of uh, monetary donations, how is it kind of? If you, <clears throat> money is not yours, it's given to you to to, to, to give. You have you, you you're obligated. You have to. So you like it or not, you have to give it. Saying so if, if if you don't give, you're not. It's not about right. not. You steal it. In a sense. Right. Okay, so number one, a person has free choice. So I'm still deciding. I think the bigger answer probably is there's a, a minimal that you have to give, but then there's a range that you're allowed to give. So up to my sir, I have to give. I could give, and it sounds like the devil, a person should give 20%, chemish, a fifth. And then, as Altarabas says in Tanya, if a person needs certain atonements, then it's just like for medicine, you're not going to hold back and say, I can't afford it, God forbid. Um, you would give whatever you can. So there's additional stuff on top of that. But that, that range, you can't say I'm obligated. That's kindness. Also, there's a way of giving stuff. A person could give it because he has no choice. So he gave it. And there's the facing way. He's happy. He's making the person feel good. He's, um, it's interesting you bring this example. Somebody complained to the Rebbe that he's giving, he was a very wealthy man, um, he's giving a lot of tzedakah. But he says, my ego is really at play here. It's not, I'm not doing it with an emiss. I don't know if he wanted to stop or he felt like, you know, it's... I told him the receiver is getting it with an emiss. Like, for, for the, on the receiving end, he's really like, he really appreciates it. In other words, don't get caught up so much that you're not doing it with an emiss regarding tzedakah. It's being done and the receiver, you know... But he's still fed, right? Yeah. You're going to become, exactly, you'll become, as the Gemara says, if you, a person lost a loaf of bread on the way home from the marketplace, someone else found it and survived thanks to that piece of bread. He comes home and he's looking through a shop and, where's my bread? You know, but he goes back to look for it. He, he's not, you know, miyayish. I don't give up and I need this bread and I'm, I hope no one finds it. I need it. No one should take it. He still gets credit for that tzedakah that he gave. He didn't want to give it. He regrets that he lost it. If he finds it, he's taking it back. But someone's right because it was his, and some benefit. He lost it. He didn't okay. give it. Still, is his credit. With the mishalachim, I have the habit of screaming, "Fine!" Every time I give a dollar, is that exemplative of this sort of attitude that we're looking for? See, <laughs> it gives a big smile to them and shakes their hand. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way to do it. Beautiful.
A yeah. certain amount of harassment from you know who is getting over the top for me. Okay, but we're, we're, we're being recorded. So. <laughs> okay, let's do a kitzer here. The next section. Kitzer the Masla on the day. Aleph. The El Masla Bechinas Ani Lodeidi. In summary, during the month of El, we start the Avoida of Ani Lodeidi, I am to my beloved, which means, translates as, the Hainu is also de la Sata. It's an awakening from below. You're not necessarily inspired. It's not Yom Kippur by the Ilah. It's a weekday. And you say, I am going to do my part to become better and to try to improve and so on. It's, it's awakening from below, we're below. And on the Yom Tevim and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, including Asar Yisrael Meitruva, who v'day dili, that's when my beloved is to me. You feel something and Hashem is coming to us, awake, waking us up to do it. And I'm shachas alikose lemato. It starts off with his left is under my head, which is also Shira Shirim, when you, <coughs> the idea of embracing. But the point is, left represents Yira, fear, and that's step one. There's The left is under the head, and then there's an embrace. So it starts off with Yira, which is the person going towards Hashem. The El, in El, you have a, a revelation of the Yomi this Anachamim. This is a summary, so it's concise. The Imkain Lama Enam Yom if you ask the question, if there are Yom Bidus or Achamim at play here, how come it's not a Yantif? The whole month of Elul, what makes a Yantif special? It's there's a certain spiritual energy that's going on, right? There's a holiness. So if Yom Bidus or Achamim, the thirteen attributes of, of compassion of Hashem are revealed in this month, it should be a Yantif or a whole, right? Something the whole the whole month. Yet we say it's an ordinary day. I thought it was extra kugels that makes the Yantif. Different shoals, sir. Yeah. <laughs> But you're right on. Um, so why are these months not? Why is this month not yantif? So you brought the analogy of a king who's in the field, and we go out to greet him. There's a certain uh, value to our decision. I'm going to talk to the king because it, it implies that I'm interested. And it's not like I have to break into the palace, but I still have to go out, and that's valuable. Yod Hashem 